<laughs> hey, Chaos. Matt here with uh, Chaos Brew Club, one of the uh, board members here. I wanted to take a minute to introduce you guys to the new chiller, show you a couple a uh, couple things on how to use it, how to care for it, and you know any tips and tricks on, on how to get your beer uh, down to chilling temperature as quick as possible. So, you know, a lot of you use the old counterflow chiller, and we wanted to make a couple improvements. This specific one um, touches three main things. It's uh, very mobile. It is very uh, has a high uh, flow rate. It is uh, has a really good amount of chilling power, uh, and also lastly, but most importantly, it's, it's very sanitary. We, we can um, check and see. So uh, let's get started and, and, and show you how to how to do some of this. Cool. So uh, we're gonna take it from uh, our storage area over here to our station. Uh, this chiller can be used at any station um, that we have. So it operates horizontally. So what we're gonna do is gonna grab our pin out of here and flip up the handle so it's a little easier to hold. Put the pin in there. Um, so I figured, I just, I'll just walk you through the chiller real quick. So there's two tubes, an inlet and an outlet for hot wart in and cold wart out. So you're going to take one and put that into the hot wart in. So we have the heart of it is our is our brand new chugger pump. This is a quick disconnect for hot wart in. <clears throat> the next nice part about uh, about the chiller here is we have a uh, a bleed valve. So previously you'd have to use an auto siphon and prime the pump. This pump still needs to be primed, but it's really easy to do that via gravity and just opening this valve, letting some wort flow through, therefore priming the pump. So we'll close that up. So it's hot, hot wort in, pump pushes it. This is our restrictor valve. So that's very, that's closed, that's open. The hot wort jumps over here and into the counterflow chiller right here. So it's gonna go in this way. We're gonna actually have our cold groundwater in here from, uh, from the wall, from the hose. That's also a quick disconnect. And then we're gonna have our, we can connect our cold wart out here as well. So, and then the last piece is the warm, warm groundwater out to, to the drain. So uh, that's a chiller uh, basi uh, basically. <laughs> um, we have a nice dial gauge here as well. That's really easy and really accurate. And we're gonna go ahead and connect these these tubes. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second here. So here we're ready to uh, to start cleaning, rinsing, and sanitizing the chiller. Go we'll hook up the uh, our cold water in and our warm water out. So similar to the other chiller, we have our on-off valve here for the uh, for the cold water in. So we have this new hose attached to the new hose. We have a quick disconnect, and we're just going to quick disconnect cold water in. To the side that has the dial on it. So it's going to be essentially counter flow. Hot wart this way, cold water this way. So we're going to go ahead and connect that guy. So that's the black hose. Over here, we're going to have our warm uh, wastewater, our warm water out. So that's the gray hose. And that gray hose also has a quick disconnect on it. A little tricky. There you go. Cool, so now it's all set up and ready to uh, ready to run. Before you use the chiller, you need to do three things. Uh, you need to clean it with hot PPW. You need to rinse that PPW out of the chiller. And then you need to um, sanitize the entire uh, the entire chiller loader with star sand. And, and then the rinse for the PPW needs to be just as hot as the PPW yes. itself. Yeah, so and the whole reason why you have to rinse PPW is because the PPW is basic on the scale and star sand works based off being an acid. Uh, so the acid actually sanitizes. So if you dilute the star sand, it's, it doesn't work. So that's what it, you have to have a rinse. It's a three-stage rinse to clean and sanitize, but we're gonna skip to just uh, showing you how star sand will go through. Yeah, so you can have, um, you know, most people use the blue buckets here. So what we're gonna do, um, you can do it via gravity or via a auto siphon. So you can hook up your auto siphon here to the beer in. Get up to an auto siphon, uh, and then go ahead and 
pump some sanitizer through the chiller just to prime the pump. You can also check here, make sure that that's good to go, which it is. And then you're going to want to run the chiller. Cool, so just go ahead and grab the extension cord, turn the pump on. So right now we have um, our we have our uh, auto siphon going to beer in. We've got our, our our flow valve open, and sanitizer is going through the entire system. We're just going to recirculate that through the uh, through the pot here. You can run that for maybe uh, up to five minutes is, is usually sufficient. Cool. So now our uh, chiller's been running for about five minutes. Everything in there is sanitized. We're going to go ahead and turn the pump off. <clears throat> we're going to sanitize our hands. Uh, we're going to take the hot wart in off of that auto siphon here. We're going to bring it over to our uh, a pot of beer. We just have water for tonight, but uh, this is a pot of water. It's about 200 degrees. So we're going to fit it onto the valve. Make sure your hands are sanitized. You have uh, your cold beer out. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that uh, since this is boiling liquid, you're very safe with it. So go down the line from the pot to your, to your chiller tube uh, and open the valves as necessary. So this pot's gonna bleed into the system via gravity. So we're gonna open that up. So water is gonna be pushing down here. The nice part about this also is that, uh, that bleed valve. So you open this bleed valve that is teed teed from the, from the pump, you want to make sure that there is water flowing. Again, that's just to prime the pump. So you got, your, you got your beer pinched here, it's already kind of pushing through. If this was your clean, sanitized fermenter, you, you'd put this into, uh, actually, you want to bleed all the star sand out first. So you'd uh, let that drain to the floor real quick. And then you turn your pump on again. So you'll see, you'll watch all the star sand come out of the system, and as soon as it does that, it may, uh, may have a little bump. So right now it looks like all the star sand's out of the system. Uh, you can assume that this would be the beer at this point. So you're going to put that into your, into your carboy or your bucket. And then um, you're also going to want to restrict it a little bit. So right now we're going to also want to, <laughs> we're going to want to turn on the, uh, the groundwater. My assistant here is turning on the groundwater. Turn that guy on full. And, uh, and if you want to uh, put the hose into the drain there, it's gonna be a little hot. That's, that's fine there, that's fine. And then so you can notice here, it's, we have our cold water versus our 200 degree, um, 200 degree wort or, or water. So we're coming down rapidly from 100 or 200 degrees down to uh, where we want it at. So right now we're at like about three quarters of the way open. If you restrict our restrictor valve even more, that's going to limit the amount of beer or amount of warp coming in, therefore dropping the pressure or excuse me, dropping the temperature down more. So now we're at 78, 76. Do a little more. About 70 degrees. So normal pitching temperature is 68, 70 degrees. You might not even want to go lower. Uh, right now in the winter time in January, um, you can uh, um, get your beer pretty pretty cold. So we're gonna we're gonna stop here at about 68 degrees. So is this like five times faster than the old other one? Yeah, it's uh, it's very fast. So yeah, it's, it's gonna be it's it's mainly we have a brand new pump that pumps seven gallons per minute. Um, our tubes are all half inch tubes as opposed to three eighths inch uh, tubes, and we have less or we have more groundwater pumping out uh, a lot faster. So it's it's much faster. Um, as of right now, we're sitting at 64 degrees coming out of the uh, coming out of the chiller, and here is our uh, our flow rate is is quite high. So you're gonna be able to go through your batch of beer here um, really quick, um, and that's again one of the main 
components of making great beer is to chill your beer really quick. We're only got about in two. minutes. <laughs> so we only have about we only have about two uh, two one or two gallons left in the pot here. Sorry with about five. So um, you know another option you know when it's a little warmer out uh, is you can uh, recirculate your beer. So I'm going to actually um, show you how to do that real quick. I'm going to turn the pump off. Yeah, so if you want to recirculate your beer, it's a, it's a pretty good way to get your beer from 200 degrees to 170 degrees, which is the threshold for uh, any kind of bacterial growth. So to get that extra 30 degrees a little quicker, you can take your, um, your cooled beer out to, put it back into, back into your pot. You can use one of these clamps here. We got a couple floating around the brew house. You can use one of these clamps to clamp onto the pot. Tube there. There you go. <clears throat> so when you recirculate, same thing. Make sure everything's primed, everything's sanitary, and you're just you're going back to the pot. We can turn our turn our pump on again. So you can see it's coming in. This is cooler wort versus your hypothetically 200 degrees, 212 degree water, and you're just recircling that, bringing the entire temperature, of everything down uh, to 170 degrees. So you're done. You're done making beer. Congratulations. Everything's everything's chilled. And all your beer is in your in your carboy. Uh, you really need to pay attention to cleaning and sanitizing at this point specifically um, to avoid you know getting our, our chiller dirty and, and kind of gross. So again, what you want to do is hit it with uh, warm or hot PBW, rinse it with water, and then rinse it one more time with star sand, uh, and then let let it dry. Um, so as of right now, this is our empty, dirty. Kettle, we're gonna turn our valve off to stop the flow of wort, if there is any. We're gonna also turn the flow off here, and we're gonna disconnect our hot wort in uh, uh, tube. So now at this point, go ahead and clean your kettle. You can grab another kettle and put it up here, fill it with hot PBW, rinse it through like I showed you before, rinse it through again with water, and then last but not least, rinse it through with star sand. It's very important. Yeah. Clean it forward. <laughs> cool. So we just uh, cleaned, uh, rinsed, and sanitized our chiller, ready to, to disassemble it. So uh, we're gonna, what you're going to do is take the wart, hot wart in, tube off, as well as the cool wart out, tube off. You can uh, dunk these in, in cleaner, rinse them off, put them in sanitizer. So the outside of the hoses are, are clean and sanitized as well. I'm gonna drop that as a sanitizer right now. You're gonna next. You're gonna want to take off the uh, cold groundwater in and the warm groundwater out to so disconnect from the system. So pull it, get there, and then pull this guy, pop that out. So at this point, um, the chiller is is disconnected. We can um, take our handle off. Put that back in there. And then you can lift it, lift it up. So we're uh, going to be draining all of the water and all of the star sand that's in here out. So the, again, the nice part about this is these tubes you can pull out. And the tubes hold all of the the wart or all the, the internal wart. And then I think the same thing at the top here. I'll pull these guys off. Cool. So at this point, this the internal chiller is all drip drying. Uh, and you can also visually inspect the inside of it to make sure that it's clear. If you do find that there is some hot particulate, something in there, or you just want to clean it. We're gonna have a hose, or excuse me, we're gonna have a brush uh, that is that is you can use to clean that as well. So for the for the um, storage of this, we're actually gonna store this to the right of the stove over here. Pull it over here. So it's gonna live right over here. As for the, as for our warm hose out, just to get that out of the way, there's a hook up here. 
and we're just gonna hook that up. Let that drip dry as well. So that's how that should look. Moving over here, we also wanna make sure that our, our hose is, is our hose a bit longer, so we're gonna make sure it's out of the way. So we're gonna coil it up real nice. <clears throat> that and lay it right here in between station two and three. Last but not least, grab our extension cord, also coil that up. So that's, that's using the chiller. Um, just things to keep in mind, um, we're going to be doing some more improvements to it, uh, a pre-chiller for the summertime, um, some on-off switches to alleviate the extension cord. There's gonna be a lot of different things changing with it, and it's nice because it's modular. Uh, we can improve upon it how we want. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Vid <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you have any questions, let us know. Thanks. That's a wrap. That's a wrap.